good evening everyone uh, we shall begin the presentation the chair person will join us shortly good evening uh, uh, mini elizabeth abraham yes. are you ready yes ma'am you can press on ma'am thank you Uh, can you see my screen, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. We can. We can. Please begin, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening, all the dignitaries. I'm Mrs. Mini Elizabeth Abraham, a PhD research scholar from Amity School of Languages, Chhattisgarh. The title of my paper is "Delving into the Essence of Conjugal Bliss in Sudha Murtis Made in Heaven." Now about Sudam Muthi, she is an Indian businesswoman, educator, philanthropist, author, and she is also the chairperson of the uh, Infosys Foundation. Born into a Brahmin family, she was raised by her parents and maternal grandparents. So these childhood experiences form the historical basis for her first notable work entitled "How I Taught My Grandmother to Read, Wise and Otherwise, and Other Stories." She is the first uh, person to be hired by the telco. and she is also known for her best social work she is the recipient of padma shri award in the year 2006 she also received rk narayan's award in the same year and she received crossword book award in popular non fiction category she is also a columnist for english and kannada newspapers now the book which i have uh, taken is the old man and his god Dis discovering the spirit of india which is a collection of snapshots of varied facets of human nature and a mirror to the souls of the people of india it is a thought provoking real incidents and anecdotes from murti's own travel and life adventures in this there is a story made in heaven through which sudha murti sheds light on the essential keys on how to make one's married life blissful so the when i go went through the re reviews research papers i saw many topics like social and cultural aspects in sudha murti women in sudha murti short stories sudha murti an eminent contributor to literature the spirit of place in select stories of sudha murti and uh, so morals and values for youngsters in stories of sudha murti and then female protagonist in the selected stories non fictional ideological values sudha murti is the old man and his god and then myriad shades of human nature a study of sudha murti and so on but i found that many though many research work has been done on sudha murti's work no work has been done on the essence of conjugal bliss hence the present research will go deep into the essence of conjugal bliss in sudha murti's made in heaven now the concept of conjugal bliss there is a right quote uh, in delicate conjugal relationship that success of marriage depends on effective working together of both husband and wife and trust is requirement for any relationship so it is a trait that is effective working of together of both husband and wife and the trust and then there is another quote uh, by white more in his book a guide to growing a happy relationship you are therefore going to need to learn to embrace the mistakes you have made and those of your spouse and instead use them as a learning platform then there is another quote from the same book learn to practice gratitude instead and for every chance and you get to make a difference in your spouse life so in um, in the book the myths of happiness what should make you happy but doesn't what shouldn't make you happy but does we there is a quote saying that we must stop waiting for happiness and we must stop being terrified of the potential for happiness so from all these uh, books we i came to the conclusion that the essential keys for the conjugal bliss is being adaptable and embracing change having gratitude and trust having a positive attitude learn to live with limitations self possessed contentment the uninhibited attitude now why conjugal bliss in the book introduction to family life education there is a chapter called marriage in india written by vimla james in that she has written written a quote by dr radhakrishnan where he says that marriages are not a mere convention 
it is institution in which each may supplement the life of the other and both may achieve completeness. In another book, The Concept of Marriage and Its Form, it is written that marriage is not just living together, it is coexistence. It is a promise to be special for each other throughout the life. It is assurance to stand by each other in every aspect of life and to be with us, each other in their mistakes as well. So in this story of Sudha Murthy, the essential keys to conjugal bliss is seen. Hence, it is selected as an area to explore. The objectives of my research is to dwell into the essence of conjugal bliss in the Sudha Murthy's maiden heaven and to analyze how the essential for marriage will make it blissful. And the probable outcome is to get an in-depth understanding of the essential keys and what of conjugal bliss and what is conjugal bliss and what steps should be taken to prevent families from getting bankrupt by planning a marriage ceremony. Through Sudha Muthi's story, Made in Heaven, a humble attempt has been made to pave the way through which the social belief that marriage is a display of social status should be replaced by the thought that it is a journey of a couple where they share their joys and sorrows and it is not an object to be flaunted. The methodology which I have used here is the textual analysis to delve into the essence of conjugal bliss. Different areas were analyzed through detailed text in this research to show Sudha Mirti's way of imparting the essence of conjugal bliss in her short story. Now, well, let us come to the story Made in Heaven. In this story, the author explains about her days when she was a teacher. In order to hone the communication and verbal skills of her students, Sudha Murthy used to conduct debate. In one uh, such debate, the topic was of marriage. Now, her students discussed various issues like the expenses incurred for the ceremony, the advantages and disadvantages of arranged marriages, how well the two people need to know one another before taking the step, and so on. So I'm taking a quote from that story. On page 58, it is written that, a wedding has always been looked upon as a social occasion in our country. So one group of students spoke for the lavish weddings while the others spoke against it. And there is a quote in the same page, the amount of money spent at a wedding has become a status symbol. Parents end up spending their life savings in these ceremonies. In our country, most bonded laborers have got into a death trap because of high marriage expenditures these lavish weddings should be banned. So when Sudha Muthi saw that the debate was getting into a great argument, she stepped in at this point and said that the expense and the ceremonies don't determine the success or failure of the marriage. And then there is a quote from the book, rather, it is the understanding that needs to develop between husband and wife. To prove her point, she told them the story of the most successful marriage which she has seen in her life, and that is the story of uh, Yallamma and Madha. She met them in a small village. So after her dinner, when Sudha Muthi was enjoying a stroll in the village with a local lady called Gauramma, she heard a very melodious song. So when inquired about it, Gauramma said that it was Madha singing for his wife Yallamma. So Sudha Muthi wanted to meet them and immediately. So she found that the young couple were very poor and they used to beg for their meals every day. So the author saw that Yalama is very sick and mother was massaging her feet and singing. When Sudha Muthi asked about their problems, Yalama replied, I'm taking the quote from the book itself. We don't have any problems. We do everything together, dividing the work between us. We usually ask each other's opinion. We always tell what is in our minds. If one is wrong, the other does not hesitate to correct. If I cannot go out, mother fetches the arms for both of us. We believe that in this journey of life, we should be together in everything. We trust each other and are happy with our lives, full of hardship though it is. So here Sudha Murthy realized that she was listening to great words of wisdom standing in front of the ramshackle hut of Yalama and uh, mother. Yalama and mother were the poorest of the poor uneducated and had faced great adversities in life but they had learned the most valuable lesson how to live happily with one's partner so there is a <clears throat> reference for this uh, this topic that is being positive means seeing where every challenge in your marriage 
as an opportunity and not necessarily a stumbling block. And there is also a quote from Whitemore Teeth in the book Marriage and Intimacy. All in all, two imperfections may not necessarily make a perfect, but they sure make a solid marriage. So I conclude, I come to the conclusion that this study gives an in-depth understanding of the traits of essential uh, keys of conjugal bliss through Sudha Muthi's story made in heaven. Further, it makes us understand how the social belief that marriage is a display of social status should be replaced by the thought that it is a journey of a couple where they share their joys and sorrow and it is not an object to be flaunted. As a result, a person or a society can make the most of the benefits of this and can use it for their betterment. Indian culture, it is a unique culture in itself. It has some good as well as some bad qualities. All we know need to understand the orthodox thoughts and remove them from the society. In our society now, marriage is often treated as a security measure and wedding ceremony as social events where the status of the couple is on display. So what we must understand is that marriage is a bond between two families. They must set a base for a happy relationship. Then the institution of marriage, again, it becomes a sacred one. So from the story of Yalama and Mother, we learn that for a conjugal bliss, lavish wedding is not necessary. Expense and ceremonies don't determine the success of marriage. Rather, it is the understanding that needs to develop between husband and wife. The understanding of love, trust, contentment, sharing their joys and sorrows is the essential keys of conjugal bliss. Now, these are the references I have taken, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Mini Abraham. Thank you, uh, so ma'am. Yes, for wonderful presentation. Now I would like to invite uh, Mahajabin Fatima. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am there. Uh, her title is Visual Culture Influence on Artistic Creativity Among Adolescents. You have 10 minutes to present. And at the end, we will have a question and answer. So okay. I request all presenters to be there at the end, till the end. Thank you. OK. Uh, first of all, I good evening, everyone. I am Ajwin Fatma, Assistant Professor at Fine Arts, Yami Mila Islamia. Uh, I really thankful to organizing committee for uh, accepting my paper and to presenting here. I I was I am going to present here a uh, title: Visual Culture uh, Influence on Artistic Creativity Among Adolescents. Adolescents. Uh, my abstract is uh, the purpose of this study was examined to through a literature of review how and what to extend visual culture influence artistic creativity among adolescents. Art is an expression of human feelings, ideas, and observation of their surroundings. Research has shown uh, art affects the fundamental sense of self, drawing, painting, and music literature are often considered to be the receptacle uh, of the society's collective memory. The study can uh, conclude that self-efficiency has the most significant influence on the student's artistic creativity, uh, whereas the influence of visual culture has a significant impact on creativity among adolescents. My keyword is uh, visual culture. Uh, visual culture uh, means uh, uh, the, uh, the collection of information that uh, crosses that lines is known as visual culture. According to Lee Houston, visual culture is a way of studying the world. We can say it, uh, it is a way to communicate with different mediums like drawing, painting, photography, advertisement, etc. The component of culture uh, that is expressed visually is known as visual culture. My uh, second uh, keyword is artistic creativity. Artistic uh, creativity, we uh, say uh, we can say uh, produce new things visually, skill uh, maybe skill or through imaginations. And adolescents 
uh, I can say uh, adolescents, uh, young people uh, who the age of between 13 to four, 17 years old. And uh, my fourth uh, uh, key word is self-efficiency. Self-efficiency means uh, uh, to a uh, students wants to do uh, self uh, uh, self motivation and self creativity. And uh, artistic creativity means uh, Victor Lonfield early uh, childhood. They uh, give uh, this uh, terminology uh, artistic decision. So now uh, I am going to produce a uh, personality uh, introduction part. Uh, we know uh, culture as judge based on our art. The most cultural and the most historical eras have not doubted the importance of studying the art. If assumed uh, that the art should be part of every child education and that they are given serious treatment as the keys of the mathematics, history and biology. Uh, Lawnfield termed this uh, stage artistic decision. Creating art is often an important outlet for young adults. The subject matter of their work uh, often give insight uh, into the individual's in, uh, interest and feelings. Those who are uh, stressed or emotionally burdened uh, often find art production therapeutic uh, style range for uh, realistic to abstract and can be dealt with the complex uh, social issues. Purpose of this study, uh, I want to. Uh, the purpose of this study was to examine how and what is individual culture influence artistic creativity among adolescents. The following research objectives were taken. Uh, number one is uh, to study the visual culture impact on artistic creativity among adolescents, and second is to study the effect of different dimensions of visual culture on students' creativity in art. Uh, for this uh, paper, uh, I used methodology. Uh, the, the research was performed with a systematic literature review. The literature was based on keywords like visual culture, artistic creativity, adolescence, and self efficiency. Now, uh, after the base, uh, after review, uh, reviewing, I want to discuss part to convey here. Uh, a learning environment is essential uh, to foster talent. Uh, along the significant contributors from parents, teacher, and school management system. Creativity is an outcome of an implementation of imagination. On the other hand, performing art involved to use personal energy and strategy. Encouragement is necessary to make the art. Students who choose not to continue studying art often remain stuck uh, at an earlier stage of development, uh, uh, do not challenge their visual way of seeing and depicting the world. As students gain more mature skills, their work become more personal. Adolescents challenge themselves by exploring new media and gaining a new variety of skills. Uh, examine the research, uh, concluding of my research, the examination research, uh, examine research of the relationship between creativity and visual art, focusing uh, on how this has been treated within the uh, psychology of art. We start out by giving a quick overview of the development of uh, art psychology, as well as the particular difficulties that come um, were researching artistic expression and creativity. Then we go over the recent research on creativity that discuss creating art and focus on the artistic strategies and methodologies and serve as the framework for the present research. In our conclusion, we uh, look take a look at some crucial issues that are particularly fascinating for the research, including issue with artistic development, evaluation method of artistic production, and artistic brain. A scholastic or a educational achievement in a school is heavily influenced by the individual's potential as well as the interplay of factors like family climate, peer group uh, school culture, socioeconomic background of family, and even area of residence. Where, uh, while scholastic achievements have been the focus many studies in contemporary literature, the achievement in art and creativity is severely uh, downplayed and even overlooked. For the uh, holistic development of a uh, child, the all round achievements are favored. Uh, this study concluded that self efficiency has the most significant uh, influence on students' artistic creativity, whereas the influence of visual culture has the significant impact of creating. Uh, among adolescents. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Fatima. Uh, 
the next presenter is Dr. Sujata Kumar, and uh, her collaborate uh, her co-author is Dr. Richa Diwari. So I would like to invite one of the presenter, Dr. Sujata Kumar, and Dr. Richa Diwari. Mm, okay, so the next presenter is uh, Dr. Manisha Bikare. Dr. Manisha Bikare, is she joining or we have to wait for her or we have to move further? Okay, so the next presenter is Dr. Ujwal M. Tiwari. Yes, I can see. I think Dr. Yeah, Ujwal is yeah, here. Yeah, good, good evening, ma'am. I'm here. Very good evening. Uh, welcome, ma'am. Uh, so I would like to invite Dr. Ujwal M. Tiwari, uh, who is Associate Professor and Head of Fine Arts uh, from IIC, IIS, uh, Jaipur, Rajasthan. Uh, her uh, presentation title is Indigenous Folk Art, a soul that carries empathy with its simplicity. So over to yeah, you, ma'am. Ma yeah, ma'am. Ma'am, is uh, my PPT visible? Yes, very much. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. So uh, uh, I'm Dr. Ujwala I'm Tiwari. And uh, I am associate professor and head in the Department of Fine Arts, IS deemed to be University Jaipur, Rajasthan. And thank you for the uh, invite and acceptance of my paper on the last day. And uh, I'm very grateful to the team. So my paper's uh, title is The Indigenous Folk Art, A Soul That Carries Empathy with Its Simplicity. Indigenous means uh, it relates to the native, native art of uh, a particular area. And native is already related to folk. So uh, when we see some uh, distinguished art, uh, which has been developed in a particular area uh, with an indigenous approach, uh, we call it folk art. And that is the soul. Uh, of the culture and the society so it carries the empathy with its simplicity because it is the simplest form where uh, we um, it's there is no not a particular uh, form that is being uh, uh, carried out or uh, th this is a traditional way of carrying some uh, elements of some forms with colors some themes and which are uh, not uh, uh, changed by uh, time to time or in time to time or due to some uh, issues so uh, this this is uh, the simplicity which gives uh, which makes a, 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 a native with uh, with the soul so indigenous uh, sorry if culture is the soul of a society art is the breath of any culture so there is a relation in between the three where there is art there is culture there where there is culture the society uh, pervades it flourishes so if the breath is stopped the culture is departed and and due to this departed uh, departed soul the society dies so we should preserve our culture and bind the society through art as all of us know that India is very rich in its art and culture, though diversified, yet common in some or the other way, whether it is a theme or color scheme, technique or purpose. The very native or indigenous art form is the folk art as a basic root, which is uh, generated, which is being um, uh, captured or it, it tightens the culture of the particular area. This art is generated in the villages where they are a very life honest simple and simple and innate 
The rural artists and craftsmen developed this art according to their local folklore, legends, heroic stories, rituals, and festivals. These are traditional art forms which are very informal and followed by generations to generations without much change. Generally, symbols, motives from nature, decorative designs are used in these art forms as these are by the, by the folk people, for the pe folk people, and of the folk people, which represent the rich culture and tradition of their areas. There are many indigenous art forms which have some or the other things common in them, which I had talked about. Maybe the theme, color scheme, style, organization of space, which is very important in this. Purpose of the creation and technique which they follow for the particular uh, art. Here in this paper, some of the common folk art forms are discussed, which are different but common in some or the other way. Because these I have picked, there are so many uh, folk arts which are, um, uh, I, I mean, India is very rich in this folk art forms. But I have taken some scroll paintings, which some, um, I mean, I have taken just four because uh, uh, it, it, it's a paper. So uh, there are some uh, common factors in these scroll paintings. So I have taken uh, Shariel or Cheriel scroll painting from Telangana. Third scroll from Rajasthan, Chitrakati from Maharashtra, and Jatopatra ya Jatua Patu, uh, Jado Patra, uh, Patua from Jharkhand. These are all scroll paintings, storytelling, simple in depiction, and original in material, technique, and theme. And the most important, the connect with the tradition, culture, and native. So, what is common in the, these uh, four uh, scrolls? Uh, the, the four uh, folk paintings, folk art. These are all scroll paintings. Basically, scroll paintings are done horizontally or vertically. And this is a traditional practice of Asian uh, countries uh, where <coughs> people used to, and uh, the artists used to prepare for the people, for some artisans who were the performers and used to, uh, who used to uh, scroll. Uh, the painting, the theme or the story at the back and they used to perform in, in front of uh, that particular uh, uh, scroll and they used to perform sing, sing and used to play instruments and uh, heroic stories were told uh, with voice modulation and so we can say it is the amalgamation of performing and visual arts. Uh, these are traditional in style, themes and technique. These are made by rural artisans without any formal training instead taken from generations to generations inspired by nature and surrounding simplified forms and decorative motives are profoundly used very rhythmic and balanced use local methods to prepare the surface color brushes and other required tools basically epic themes legends from literature literary general or local uh, literatures are covered in this folklores folk stories and local poetries are also depicted natural eye catchy and bright colors are used these are storytelling art arts in which a scroll with a story is read by a performer who sings with an instrument and performs according to the story depicted in the scroll Full surface is used for depiction because uh, uh, this is the, or the space organization which was uh, talking about uh, previously. I talked about that organization of space that is very important. Um, so they have used full surface for the uh, depiction of the theme. A whole story is narrated in a scroll while dividing the space with a wall, tree, curtain, or a pond, or maybe some other uh, objects or um, boundaries carried the same patterns from centuries without changing any method. But some folk artists attempt to experiment with new forms from time to time and create an individualistic type of folk art. These artists develop a new style within the old formats. So uh, they have changed something. Uh, they have added some, uh, some new uh, elements or some new um, subjects to the, uh, their, their traditional themes also. So uh, this is the uh, Cheriel or Cheriel scroll painting, uh, which is uh, uh, generally 
uh, I should say ki, uh, it is from, uh, mm, I mean, uh, 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 it is again a scroll painting uh, on which uh, the artisans and artists used to paint Shiva, Vishnu, and they have taken the themes from epics and some mythological and folk uh, lo lores and uh, folk uh, tales also. Uh, some of them are Krishna Leela, Ramayan, Mahabharat, Shiva Puran, Markande Puran, uh, and, and some folk stories from uh, Gadwa and Madiga. These are the local heroes and local uh, personalities who have been depicted. So I should come to the uh, thing, which is uh, I have taken it. This is a scroll, and this uh, uh, scroll, this is this is scroll depicts Ramayan, where we can see. Um, uh, Dashrat and uh, the, the the Kaushalya and then kings and then what happens? The whole story is being depicted, and uh, uh, these have come to take uh, Ram and Lakshman. Uh, they they are going with uh, Guru Vashisht, and now Vashisht are uh, saying some uh, preaching him, and then uh, with the um, uh, with the blessings of Vashisht, these two go for. Uh, Swamvar and then Ram uh, gets Sita. So it, it's a wedding uh, which is being depicted and this is a scroll. Now what happens? The uh, performer comes in front of the and this is scroll and then uh, with with the uh, poetry and uh, he composes or she composes uh, the poetry with music and then performs in front of this. So we can see the, another scroll. This is again uh, been taken from Ramayan and uh, Ram Sita Swayamvar and uh, later on how uh, he uh, Ram kills um, these monsters and then they go to the whole Ramayan has been depicted over here. I would like to say this is the golden deer after which Ram go, goes and then uh, abduction of Sita abduction of Sita and then he kills Ravan and then comes with Sita. So here we can see it is the whole scroll, scroll which has been depicted. Now we see Krishna Leela. Here we can see how uh, Krishna uh, used to uh, play flute and then uh, gopis used to come. And same is here how he used to play with uh, these gualas and uh, cows and uh, the herd. And later uh, Kaliya Mardan we can see here. This is Shakti legend. Shakti, Shakti ka, uh, I mean the story of Shakti uh, has been depicted. Then we can see daily day routine of people, how they work and how they go carry their, how they uh, carry out their daily day routine life. We can see harvesting and all. Again, we can see this kind of daily day routine life. Uh, now, the most important and very uh, attractive thing is this. They have taken this, uh, they have created this in their folk uh, touch. And uh, uh, they are uh, telling us about the corona uh, virus and how to we should protect ourselves. We should stay home, stay safe. And then they are playing indoor games. And they are, she is using masks. Everybody is using masks. And hygiene and all, which, how should we protect ourselves from? coronavirus so they have taken some uh, new challenges also they have taken some new uh, subjects also how uh, second thing uh, which i was uh, i would like to point out is the elements which uh, these artists have used the colors are very bright which are very attractive and uh, attractive and uh, uh, catchy eye catchy uh, so that uh, uh, everybody who comes or who passes by or if he sees uh, these colors attract the content. We can see how these are prepared and uh, how these uh, scrolls are being created. Now we have a uh, third scroll painting from Shapura Bilwara, as I believe from Rajasthan. I, I live, I am from Rajasthan, and uh, I attended a work workshop also on third, third uh, scroll painting, and uh, I was very fascinated about the style technique they use and the gods and goddesses local deities and they paint on that basically they uh, paint uh, devnagri uh, sorry devnarayanji ki fard and pabuji ki fard fard means uh, 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 in their local language it is a scroll and that is red 
uh, I mean, uh, that is being read because uh, there is no script. The, these are the um, live pictures or uh, small um, sets of pictures with the whole uh, story is being depicted on one surface and that is being read and sung. So these are the third and uh, basically they have some measurements for this. If uh, mm, uh, they are making Pabuji ki fur, it should be of 13 arm length long and if it is making of Devnarayanji ki fur, then they have to make, uh, they made it so 30 feet long. Uh, so the technique is again, uh, it's a very uh, traditional technique. They use cloth which has been taken, which, which has been uh, woven by a particular uh, caste uh, people and then taken it then uh, 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 a lip i mean uh, um, they mix rice powder and then uh, white clay with that and then they uh, take that on the surface of the uh, uh, cloth and uh, when it dries then they rub it with the moonstone or they smooth it with some stone and all naturally and then they uh, create the outline form of the uh, content in very light colors, brown color or yellow color. And then they fill the bright colors. And in the last, they uh, do the whole uh, composition in lines with black. So they use, uh, generally they use, uh, uh, I mean, they use uh, um, green, uh, yellow, red, uh, white, and black, blue. They are used sometimes. They use black, blue also. So this is the uh, Narayanji Kifar, where we can see how uh, what the whole story of Dev Narayanji has been depicted over here. So we can see these are the the partitions uh, which I told you the organization of his space, how they have or uh, uh, created use the whole space for a particular life story to be told. Next one is, the, this is the Pabuji ki for where Pabuji is going for wedding. And uh, he has, uh, these the horses are again uh, very different. When uh, the Narenji ki for is being created, the white horse will be there. And if, if Pabuji is there, then black horse will be there. So uh, this prominently, only black color for the uh, sorry, Pabuji is used. So we can see how he has, uh, he is going towards uh, to, to wed uh, a princess. Then again, uh, a general uh, procession of a Bharat or a groom is going to, uh, uh, is taking her his bride along with, uh, to his castle or to his fort. This is Hanuman Chalisa, which we can see uh, the whole, um, this has been taken into 40 uh, segments or uh, partitions. And uh, each chopai, each chopai has been depicted with someone with the Ill illustrations. We can say illustrations. If in a common sense we use, it can be said as illustrations. So the lines are very powerful. Royal procession and celebrations, again, we can see. This has been done. This is Ras, Krishna Leela, Ras Leela. And uh, basically, it is Krishna Leela because yeah, uh, we can see uh, from the birth of Krishna to um, Gordhan um, mountain being picked up, then uh, each and everything, and then Ras Leela. This is the Maharas. We say about that. This has been done on Purnima. Uh, Sharad Purnima. So uh, many deities and uh, so many gods and goddesses come to dance with Krishna in the form of gopis. So Krishna Radha can be observed here and these gopis are the uh, gods and goddesses and deities of heaven. Uh, this is how a performer performs in front of the fur. These are, uh, he is Kalyan Joshi ji, who is the first one, four more, jo ki, uh, he has, who has taken out uh, this uh, part into, uh, up to national, international level. So he takes classes and teaches, basically, um, 
in their houses girls uh, are not taught because they move to different house but the first ford which is being created is to be started with a with a girl Then we, I have taken Chitrakati painting. This is from Maharashtra. And uh, uh, we can see the same kind of things which has been uh, I, I uh, previously explained how this uh, Chitrakati has been done. So uh, these are again illustrated legends of their particular areas. Here we can see uh, a part of uh, Ramayan where uh, Sita is being. Um, Forcefully set on uh, uh, under the tree of Ashoka, and these are the monsters who are taking care of Sita, who uh, so that he she cannot move from the place. And we can see Hanumanji over here, so uh, who is uh, observing all which is being spoken to Sita and uh, the whole. I mean, everybody knows about Ramayana and this part, so it is. Uh, uh, I don't think I should uh, explain more. Rather, I would like to explain the color scheme of these paintings. Secondly, the eyes, which is being uh, uh, very uh, bright, uh, widely opened eyes, uh, are the characteristics of this uh, painting. Here we can see um, again. Sorry, we can see uh, this is the fight between um, Lakshman and uh, Meghna. Again, a part of uh, Ramayan. Then we can see Riddhi Siddhi and uh, Ganesha, uh, which is again Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, Ganesha is very important and they worship them with Riddhi Siddhi. So we can see this kind of artwork. Here we can see Hanumanji in Ravan's court where uh, they have coiled his uh, tail to sit uh, um, on the same level of Ramayan, Raman and rather uh, much higher too because uh, he is saying that i am uh, the messenger of uh, ram and ram uh, the messenger is equivalent to uh, the sender who is a king or the lord of the universe so we can see now again we can observe these kind of eye uh, expressions this is the mahabharata where duryodhan is uh, pulling hair of draupadi and uh, these Pandavas and other people are uh, helpless to uh, see. And this person has been, uh, Dushashan has been shown, um, taken that uh, Dupatta of Draupadi under his feet. Uh, these are again, Arjun has been shown over here and fighting with some, uh, some people. Then we have again, here we can see this is uh, uh, Shurpan Khan's nose has been cut by uh, Lakshman. And uh, then she converts, she shows herself as a, a demon. Now again, we can see when Sita is lost, Ram and Lakshman are uh, searching for uh, Sita. So um, we can find out, he finds out these uh, creatures over there and this is again Hanumanji has been shown with some uh, some Sanjeevni uh, for, uh, who collected this Sanjeevni from um, Himalayas this is an old Chitrakathi which has been found to keep, uh, which has been uh, created on uh, paper now and it is in a very uh, poor condition but uh, taken with the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, kiya hua hai abhi bhi. the person uh, who has Chitrakathis. Then we have uh, Jatopatiya, Jatopatriya, or Jadupatua paintings. These are the scroll paintings from Jharkhand. And uh, Santhal people create these, and Santhal people uh, depict their daily, daily routine life. So uh, we can see again. These are bright in colors and they have depicted their uh, routine life. And uh, we can see these are the colors which has been created uh, by natural vegetations and natural stones and flowers and coal and all. And we can see how uh, 
the 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 crop is uh, blooming and these people are dancing uh, due to a good uh, crop and good season then we can see krishn with gopis and radha these are the daily day routine life of these people we can see this is the daily day routine life of these three thank you but i would like to say that uh, there are so many things which are uh, to be uh, taken care of because uh, ignorance of these folk arts is uh, very challenging because <coughs> urbanization which chetna arya told about uh, urbanization is again um, a very a challenge to the artisans and the artists because uh, everybody wants modernization and these are the, uh, these are the artists which are uh, which are also running towards this urbanization so uh, whereas in urban cities these uh, there are some lovers of art who are coming towards back towards this uh, style of painting and what are they doing they are doing nothing they are taking out the printouts and they are putting that on their uh, walls and they are not promoting or motivating these artists rather they are uh, get they are taking out some um, short ways for their pleasure and uh, i think this is a spoiling the folk arts this is a great challenge for us they want to go back to native cultural practices but in a very different way and that should not be practiced and they should not be uh, appreciated uh, uh here in rajasthan i have seen so many uh, centers which are trying to motivate these artists and they are taking uh, uh, these artists from their native places and workshops have been conducted to teach the people the urban people so that even if they are not buying something from them rather they should practice that into the, in with their hands because when we create with our hands the importance of uh, importance of uh, creativity i mean uh, uh, what we feel uh, when i when we prepare a tea that becomes very important for us say in the same way when we create a, an art it becomes very uh, i mean valuable but when we buy when we go to buy some, at some places uh, we bargain with, uh, with the local people so it should not be in, done in that and they are not given good wages good prizes uh, for their uh, artworks also so thank you Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ujjwal uh, Ujjwal Atiwari, ma'am. Uh, so I would like to. Is there any other participant uh, for the session? Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Priya Singh. Okay. This side. Okay. Okay. Then at the end, I will give my feedback and uh, remarks on the all papers. So uh, Priya Singh. Priya Singh, right? Yes, ma'am. Priya Singh. Mm -hmm. I don't have your. Okay, please. I would like to invite Priya Singh for her presentation. So please, over to you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just would like to share my screen. Uh, how would I go with it, ma'am, to share the screen? Wait, I'll just find. It. Uh, I think you have to click. Uh, there is a yes, yes, yes. Present now option, a button. Is it visible? No, uh, not now. All right, ma'am. I'll just try again. Is it visible now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is coming. Yeah, it has yes. come. Yes. yes, yes, yeah. Uh, so, good evening, everyone present here, and uh, I'm really thankful to you all for giving me this opportunity, even in the eleventh hour, to present to make my presentation. 
<clears throat> somehow due to some kind of you know uh, problems i couldn't make it and i had to withdraw but then i got this opportunity thank you so much ma'am and thanks to everybody who has given me this chance and my topic today is i'm priya singh from mit university under the guidance of dr indrani singh rai and today the topic of my presentation is the journey of the bipolar protagonist from psychological turbulence to spiritual transcendence in hermann hess steppenwolf so i would quickly go through my slides and explain why i have taken this topic what will be the outcome and why exactly and how is it going to serve the society so before going when i'm talking about bipolar disorder that is the protagonist who is in steppenwolf and steppenwolf is a work by hermann hess so i would go to hermann hess a little later but then i would like to explain what is this bipolar disorder it's a kind of a brain disorder which creates a lot of mood swings maybe it might a person might land into a land of despair because of kind of despondence and distress that he faces in his life and then might actually revive and rejuvenate even at some point it is all about the experiences a person has and it's all about the kind of an outcome he has because of those experiences so this is called bipolar disorder and in medical terms and the novel in context which i have taken that is steppenwolf it's by the swiss german nobel laureate Herman Hesse. Now, the protagonist in this novel, we find a lot of resemblance, uh, which I try to prove here first is, it is about kind of, you know, turbulence in life, and then ultimately reaching and traversing through the path of solace, the quest for identity, the quest for silence and peace, and reaching a land of transcendence, kind of peace. There, so transcending, it's all about transcending and traversing through this path. So this novel speaks about, now, why this novel and why this writer, why this theme? This I thought many a times because all the works by Hermann Hesse, this German uh, writer, all his novels focus on one thing, self-identity, self-analysis. Now, when I tried to focus on this and try to even uh, flip through the kind of uh, happiness quotient and all in the country. I found India also suffering a lot. Despite whatever advancements made, it's we have noticed that since times immemorial, we have been fighting with many problems. And recent was even COVID-19 pandemic when many suffered in different ways. Now the chaos and this rat race, the materialistic gains, why these haven't provided man any solace? Now, even if I speak for my kind of educational aspirations or whatever, ultimately, what is it by the end of the day that solace is required? And why is man failing to achieve? What is that element missing in the life of a human being that he is failing to actually enjoy these pleasures and gains and accomplishments? Somewhere it comes to that when I read Herman Hesse, I found that he suffered the same the same turmoil, the same turbulences in his life, disturbances. So this novel speaks about one of these novels. Most of his novels have almost the same concept, same kind of a storyline leading from this kind of a turbulence to spiritual transcendence. But this Steppenwolf very significantly, you know, illustrates that and proves it. Now, in the given context, which I already explained, the aim of this study is to give an insight into the healing power of spirituality and to highlight the need of the unification. Two ends are there for human existence. One is the spiritual summit and second, the material base. People tend to forget the first and they do remember the latter. So this is how is creating all the turmoil in life. So here Herman has life somewhere. If the readers read, probably to some extent would be able to expose them to that kind of a life and already also would like to highlight highlight this kind of, you know, um, the I mean, kind of a dilemma where a person stands at crossroads and doesn't understand what to do. So if anybody reads, so this is an objective through this work, it is to create an awareness and awakening in the society that ultimate is what? Self-analysis analyze yourself try to know yourself where is it leading to now if we see steppenwolf and um, uh, herman has similarity now here harry holler if we see right from the uh, protagonist's name protagonist in steppenwolf is harry holler and 
he is Hermann Hess. Now, with the initials also, we find the similarity. So in Harry Holler, in the Steppenwolf says, instead of narrowing your world and simplifying your soul, you will at last take the whole world into your soul, cost what it may, before you are through and come to rest. This is the road that Buddha and every great man has gone. It's in page number 44 in the book Steppenwolf. Now, in the novels of Hermann Hesse, we find this protagonist completely perplexed, completely exasperated, and trying to find what is ultimately the essence of life. Why are we living? What is this for? And somehow, towards the end, the protagonist comes to terms with life, understands the essence. And when I talk about bipolar, we see the protagonists in his novels are able to actually merge these both polar ends and then live a successful life living in both the polar ends. So here we see that he tried to live this kind of a life. It's all because of the background. So this novel has also been called, I mean, in some of the illustrations and some of the explanations and reviews, basically the method has been literature review and it's a kind of the methodology is um, qualitative. So it is somewhere in the literature review and all it's found that he had this kind of a mindset and all the novels centralized toward this, the, the focal of all these novels was somewhere spirituality and awakening, reawakening rather. Why? Because it's the life of Herman Hesse himself. He was born in a kind of a family where bourgeois family, what we say, he hated bourgeois, the middle class tendency and all, but he was born in a pittest family, religious background, child of missionaries, brought up with all those religious teachings. Everything was given to him, but somewhere he was totally disturbed. His childhood wasn't good. He was completely perplexed what to pursue in life because of distractions. He even read, he even tried to kind of emulate the life of Gautam Buddha. But then he found at some point, emulating someone's life, would it help him? Experiences are different from person to person. So all his experiences, we find a clear picture. Now, the novel was named Stephen Wolf after the German name for the Steppe Wolf. Now, here's Steppe Wolf, the grasslands wolf. And this Steppe Wolf, it is considered to be very ferocious, a kind of very aggressive, which would kill out some seals or something out of just pleasure. It's an aggressive kind. Now, Steppenwolf, where he has named himself here, the character named is like a Steppenwolf. Half wolf, half man. That's what Herman has considered him to be because of the frustrations and because of the turmoil of his life that neither he is human completely nor he is animal, but he is a Steppenwolf. That is half human, half wolf. Now, this half, this a uh, novel may be called an autobiographical novel, which combines somewhere the real and the surreal elements both together. Now, he is Harry Hollow, whose story sketches the life of Herman Hesse himself. So it is kind of a meta fiction, wherein we find his life as well. Now, the title uh, refers to a style adopted by Harry Holler. Now, he is a writer. So I have already spoken about it. The slide has come now. All So here, um, when we talk about the middle class society, he is full of despair thinking about it. And in the story, we find Harry Holler somehow resorting to some kind of, you know, uh, refuge or some kind of escape. Because of his emotional inhibitions, he tries to find that solace in kind of sexual associations and tries to go. But at the same time, he has love for literature. He has love for music. The same we find in the life of Herman Hesse. Now, these are the similarities which we say, like Harry Holler, whose initials the author shares, Hesse was very depressed in his life. Like Holler, he sought peace and comfort through sexual indulgence. Both the protagonist and the author are middle-aged men who are interested in music and literature. Now, it is a novel which has elements of personal experience which suggest psychological exploration as well as spiritual transcendence. Now, if we go into the depth of um, Herman Hess life, we find a lot. He was influenced by Carl Jung. He was influenced by Schopenhauer. Many have written about him a lot that because of his emotional turmoil, he could see or find that refuge in India, his anchor, that is spiritual anchor he looked for. So Hess, he's a Nobel laureate, I already told. And his parents brought him in a way in a Protestant mission 
missionary family he was brought up and was influenced by Schopenhauer. And now if we speak of spiritual transcendence, he was very much influenced by Bhagavad Gita and the teachings of Gautam Buddha. He traveled east. And when he come to east, in his novels, first novel also, Peter Kamisin, we find in Siddhartha, which he wrote in 1922, he at that time looked towards the east for the rebirth of Western civilization which was in its decadence at that point of time. So he faced so much of the oil. World War, World War was there. He could witness both the World Wars, failed life, sickness of his elder son. Three times he married in his life for this sole somehow. All this together form the outline of his stories. And whichever book you pick up, all these novels, it says, but Steppenwolf highlights because of the title itself. It's half human, half wolf. The deeds are half of human in the life and half of the wolf in the life. So despite culture, cultured upbringing, despite cultural preconditioning, Herman Hesse couldn't escape harsh realities of life, but endeavored to face them and then come up with this kind of a purgation, which may be called spiritual transcendence. So it is one of his greatest novels and wherein he, uh, uh, faced all of trials and tribulations and he also received nobel prize in 1946 so this is all about his life and i put an end to my presentation here thank you so much ma'am you're not audible Uh, many thanks, uh, Dr. Priya Singh, for a wonderful presentation. So Thank now you. I would like to first uh, <clears throat> give some remarks uh, step by step on the all papers. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, the organizer. Uh, today's uh, conference has uh, organized by the Department of English, Holy Cross College, uh, Nagar Kuel Kanyakumari, Tamil Nadu, India, in collaboration with Cape Comorin Trust. I congratulate uh, to the convener, Ms. M. Maria Helen Danova, who is the head of the Department, English Holy Cross College. I thank uh, Dr. Uh, uh, R.S. Regin Silvest, uh, Dr. Shubhra Jamwal, and other uh, team members for inviting me to chair a session. Uh, I am very on honored to be here today uh, to chair a session. And today we had uh, we have four presenters with us, and uh, the topics the presenters are Mini Abraham, uh, Dr. Priya Singh, um, Mahjabin Fatima. Uh, then uh, we had uh, Dr. Ujwal, Ujwala Tiwari. So, yes, I really enjoyed all presentations. Uh, the min, mini Abraham's presentation was on uh, conjugal bliss, uh, the uh, marriage relation with, you know, most of the novels we have seen that uh, the, the stories of uh, lovers and so uh, uh, youngsters, but uh, very few stories we uh, we have in literature which talks about the marriage, husband and wife relation. So it was like wonderful presentation. I congratulate her. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to appreciate uh, Mahjabin Fatima to focus on adolescence, uh, <coughs> visual art and uh, culture, uh, which was, you know, wonderful presentation which was also uh, the related to dr ujwala tiwari's aim and objective to focus on uh, creativity uh, art and culture uh, dr ujwala tiwari's uh, uh, presentation was on folk uh, empathy with simplicity it was a wonderful presentation i really enjoyed the way how she presented uh, the you know it was wonderful and fascinating for me to know more about Rajasthan paintings, Maharashtrian paintings, and you know, uh, every painting has its own story. So, so the, you know, when you see the visualized images, you learn more and, you know, you attract to more to the paintings and you educate 
and enlightened you know, in very easy manner. So these paintings really, you know, gives a visual pleasure, enlighten, educate, give a religious, cultural uh, messages through the painting. So yes, uh, I hope uh, the education policy and other, you know, educational academicians will also appreciate uh, the creative arts and, you know, uh, add these uh, paintings into the uh, into the syllabus and you know uh, promote to paintings and cultural different different cultural forms and i really enjoyed how she you know uh, dr ujwala tiwari uh, connected from the ancient time to uh, postmodern time corona paintings she talks about ramayana mahabharata and all all you know in a in a whole own in a one painting i uh, uh, you know, but only one painting gives a uh, whole story of Ramayana, whole story of uh, Mahabharata, uh, uh, whole story of uh, Krishna. So it was like very uh, important nowadays, which we are not promoting to this creativity uh, for paintings, but yes, they should be, you know, preserved and uh, promote, uh, promoted. And also we need women participate in these kind of paintings uh, so yes so this these are the my observations in that thank you ma'am i would like to say something more uh, you just yes. talked about two things uh, about the national uh, education policy they have already included and they are uh, teaching these secondly uh, yes, these are the two two the all these um, scroll paintings are created by women okay these are yes. not uh, yeah most of them, I uh, the women, the I, women, I, I hear only one painter's name from you. So, okay. Okay, then very, Fine. very, very good. Very good. Appreciate it. So, Thank you, yes. And uh, another, uh, the last presenter was uh, Dr. Priya Singh. Uh, she talked about uh, Stephen Hull. And uh, yes, uh, we have, you know, more colonized uh, we have neo we are in neo colonized era and we have uh, listened these stories from the you know we are more influenced than uh, from the west so the, the this author is influenced by you know uh, our uh, 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 gautam buddha and also again uh, this uh, novel talks about uh, the mythical half man half you know uh, wolf kind of idea which is more uh, metafiction mythical and uh, you know uh, this this, uh, this also we have to explore we go only we you know we explore only the uh, uh, western uh, ideas and influences we have seen in our writers but yes we have also have an influence in others so that also need to be elaborated and focused so thank you so much it was also a wonderful presentation and very uh, contemporary to uh, bipolar disorder so i congratulate all four presenters today i really enjoyed and uh, i i hope to listen you in uh, in another conference and yes i congratulate and so i end the session today so if you have any question if any audience or any participant has any question you can ask directly to the presenters or you know put in the chat box no no ma'am no questions okay okay so i end the session and congratulations thank you so much for giving me your valuable time and inviting me today it was wonderful time with you i listened so many ideas i learned so many things from you and yes Thank you, Thank, so you much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks you. for your feedback and patient hearing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Thank Bye, you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable presence throughout this uh, presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you, dear participants, for your effective explanation of your concepts. Yes, congratulations. Uh, it was wonderful uh, conference. I hope, I hope, um, Miss Maria, you will also organize other conferences with more collaboration, national, international levels. And uh, you will invite me. I would like to be sure, a part of that. Sure, <laughs> ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.